My name is Matthew Walker. I'm Professor of Neurology and Head of the Department of Clinical and Experimental Epilepsy at UCL Institute of Neurology and also at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery in Queen Square. Um, and while, uh, quite a lot of my research is uh, centered around uh, gene therapy for epilepsy. So one of the big challenges uh, is people with uh, refractory, treatment for people with refractory epilepsy. Um, and really the best treatment we have for people with that type of epilepsy is surgical treatment to try and cut out the part of the brain that is generating the seizures. It's rather restricted uh, by the areas of brain that you can actually remove or cut out. So rather than removing the part of the brain, what we've been looking at is to try to modify, to decrease the excitability of the nerve cells in that area of the brain. Uh, and one of the most effective ways of doing that, uh, and long-lasting ways of doing that, is uh, gene therapy. Now gene therapy takes advantage of the viruses that we have around us. Uh, the viruses can get into nerve cells, and when the virus gets into nerve cells, uh, it can offload its uh, DNA, and that's how it replicates and eventually will destroy the cell. Now, if you modify these viruses so that they're no longer infected, infective, um, and you give them a specific DNA to take into a cell, then rather than destroying cells, what they can do is they can modify uh, the excitability of those cells, so we can decrease the excitability of those cells. Um, and we've looked at this, and it seems to be very effective uh, in stopping epilepsy, or the potential to stop epilepsy, uh, which is focal, where we can inject a virus into a local area of brain. Um, and we're looking now to try and translate that up into um, clinical studies, uh, which we're hoping will be um, within the next five years. The big advantage of doing this is that modifying the excitability of nerve cells rather than removing them uh, means that we can preserve function. So we're not cutting out parts of the brain which is merely stopping the seizure activity from occurring in that part of the brain. Uh, and indeed, we've, we've managed to show that such gene therapies uh, do, do not affect the function of that area of the brain. Now, as a, uh, um, we've taken this further, and indeed other groups have taken this further, and there were presentations at the meeting here about this, which is that we can put whatever we like into a nerve cell. So uh, we can make the nerve cell less excitable by putting in channels that are there, or increase the number of channels that are there already. Or we can put in proteins, for example, that are sensitive to light. Um, and when you put in proteins sensitive to light, it means that you can shine a light on that area of the brain and affect the excitability. And so there's been a certain amount of work here showing that you can have a uh, seizure detection algorithm. So you have an electrode detecting the seizure beginning, the light shines onto the cells that have been manipulated and you can stop the seizure that way. Uh, and we've been taking this process even further than that, where we can start to put in proteins so that the cells will express a receptor that will only um, respond to a specific drug and that drug has no other um, effects in the body or brain. So it's then possible to just target a drug to that specific area of the brain uh, to stop seizures. Now the light, the light therapy, which is called optogenetics, um, and the, um, the therapy in which we're putting in a drug target, which is called chemogenetics, I think um, are going to be much further in the future. There's a lot of developments that need to, um, to be done there before we go into clinical trials. But the initial therapy of just modifying the excitability of nerve cells is something that uh, we think uh, is a possible therapy, an alternative to surgery, and in the future could be used where we cannot do surgery in areas of the brain that are important for movement or language, uh, and also may be possible to address epilepsies where there may be multiple areas of the brain involved uh, because we can put this therapy into multiple areas. And we see this as a great hope uh, for people with drug-resistant